Every news agency in Israel is covering the story that the Temple Mount has now been closed to Jewish worshipers in Jerusalem. I was on the Temple Mount this morning, and I thought that the 25th of Tammuz this week was going to be a personal celebration for me, because today I thought was going to be the first time I was going to be able to pray as a free person, as a free Jew in the land of Israel at our holiest site. I ended up getting arrested on the Temple Mount and thrown off. And I've documented the story from the time that I woke up until now. And I want to share this with the world to know what's going on in Judaism's holiest site. What's actually happening in Jerusalem? Every person that cares about justice, that cares about equality, that cares about freedom and rights should care about what's happening on the Temple Mount in Israel today. It's the 25th of Tammuz, July 19th. And this is probably one of the most exciting days that I ever remember. Harabite, the Temple Mount, is open up for Jews to actually pray there. I've gone up to Harabite, I don't know how many times, countless amounts of times. And there were always Arab guards from the walk from Jordan that wouldn't allow Jews to pray. Imagine that in our democracy in Israel, Jews couldn't have freedom of religion. And now for the first time, we're able to go up and pray after the last terror attack on the Temple Mount. Ari's coming to pick me up. We're on our way to the mikvah, and for the first time, we're gonna pray as free people in Jerusalem. The heavens are shaking, and I'm gonna keep you updated so we can go up to Harabai together, because I don't remember a time where such a significant change has happened in the land of Israel in the last 30 years. All right, we're in our car on the way to the mikvah, on the way to Yerushalayim, and as you can see, the sun is just coming up now over Bethlehem. And this is a historic mikvah going. I don't remember how many times I've gone to the mikvah. I think that if we actually are able to go up to Harabite and pray as free Jews in Jerusalem, I think you're actually supposed to be Kovea it as a Yom Tov for the rest of your life. Like the 25th of Tammuz, from this day forth is going to be a giant celebration. Assuming we're able to go up and to pray freely and uh, call out to Hashem as we would want to do, because the, there's an opera, there's a chance that the Israeli government may start being like, no, we're going to institute the law even if the walk isn't there. That's a, a, a possibility. And that's why we're going up as soon as we can, because we don't know how long this opportunity will last. I mean, we're in the heart of the three weeks before the destruction of the temple. We're about to enter in to the nine days before the ninth of Av. And all of a sudden, for the first time in Jewish history, the Temple Mount is being open for prayer. We're jumping on the opportunity as soon as possible. And we know a bunch of friends that are coming with us. So we just got to the old city, and I'm thinking that maybe people need a little bit of background about how all of this happened. There was a terror attack just a few days ago on the Temple Mount and two Druze Israeli police officers were killed. And at that point, Israel obviously said, well, we need to take security measures in order to prevent more terror attacks happening. And they put up metal detectors outside of the Temple Mount in order to ensure that no one would bring up weapons to the Temple Mount, our holiest site. And now the Arab Waqf is boycotting the Temple Mount. We don't want to go through metal detectors. We want to be able to kill Jews whenever we want to kill Jews. Or Druze Israeli police officers whenever we want to kill Israelis. And the Israeli government, rightfully so, is saying, well, we're putting up metal detectors and if you don't want to come to Harabite, don't come to Harabite. But now for the first time, we don't have these Arab guards protecting our lips, trying to guard our hearts from connecting to God. And so we don't know how long this boycott is gonna last, but finally, there's a boycott of Israel that we can really get behind. The walk should continue to boycott the Temple Mount until Mashiach comes. Amen. <laughs> so I just got out of the mikvah behind me. And every time you get out of the mikvah, you feel renewed, you feel reborn, you feel ready, you feel cleansed. And now to prepare myself before going up to Harabite, we're going to go to the Kotel in Davin Shacharit. And I'm getting a little bit nervous that maybe the police will not allow us to pray. Maybe this is just a fantasy. Is this really going to happen? I don't know. You know, I just finished my davening here at the Kotel. And I know the Kotel is known as the site that is holiest to the Jews, but it's really not true. And although so many prayers have been brought here, 
and so many Jews have poured out their heart before God here, I can't help but feel that this wall somehow represents also a barrier, a barrier to our freedom, a barrier to the next level of Jewish consciousness that we're supposed to achieve, and really it's a wall. But as I looked up here from where I was standing, it's time for us to go above the wall. It's time for us to go beyond our barriers. It is time for a new era in Jewish history. Well, I'm walking up to Harabite now, and we just got the notice from the police officer that we're still not allowed to pray, even though the Arab Waqf aren't going to be up there. I just can't believe it. I don't know if he's just saying that because that's the rule or if that's the reality. So we're going up there right now, but I can't help but feel like my heart is literally just broken with the fact that we're not gonna be able to daven. I just can't believe it. You know, I'm just now, as we're waiting to go up, going through my WhatsApps, I sent out a message to a bunch of friends saying, I'm going up, if you have any prayer requests, let me know. And I got dozens and dozens of prayer requests. And now the question is, am I going to be able to pray up there or not? We're going up now, and I've never seen this many officers that have been stationed to take this group up. There's literally dozens dozens of police officers that are following us around now. Just a moment, we're in the middle of the three weeks now. We're coming close to Tisha B'Av. Think about how many prayers went up to Shemaim directed at this place. 2,000 years, three times a day, every Jew that was alive davening, four times on Shabbat, millions upon millions of prayers from when we were in Russia, we faced the south facing Harabite. When we were in America, we faced the east facing Harabite. From all around the world, for millions and millions of prayers. And now, finally, the Jewish people, so close to Tisha B'Av, are now walking feet away from Harabite, feet away from Kodesh HaKodeshim. We are literally living the prayers of all of our fathers and their fathers and their fathers. Lavin mamash. Now I need to give a little background. We walked around and the Jewish police were so merciful. They really were. They allowed us not to pray with our lips, but they allowed us to pray with our hearts. And they know what that means, and we know what that means, because very often they don't let us even do that. And we were so close. And usually when we go up there, the Arabs purposefully yell Allah Akbar at us and the walk for yelling at us to shush. And it's impossible to enter into any type of meditative state because you see children playing soccer and throwing garbage on our holiest site and you just, you don't know what to do. Your heart breaks, you feel the exile so powerfully and for the first time, there was no one up there. There was no one up there except those that wanted to be there to pray and wanted to be there because it's holy to them. And it was just beyond. And I felt so connected to all of the people that were there with me and I felt very connected to the police officers that were there with me. Some people were crying and I just felt like truly all of Israel is one body and all of us are limbs within that body. And yes, the police officers have to do what they have to do, but I have to do what I have to do. And I went up to the police officer and I said, I want you to know I hope you're not mad at me and I love you, but I have to do what I have to do. And then my heart just opened up and as I bowed down right in front of the Temple Mount, I felt as though a spiritual explosion was let forth from my heart. And the police officer picked me up and carried me off of Harabite. It was one of the highlights of my life because it was a little bit scary and I knew that it wasn't allowed, but I was just being true to what I know is true. And it's true that the Jewish people should have a right to pray as a free people in the land of Israel. It's not fair that the Muslims can pray there, but Jews can't. In our own democracy, freedom of religion is not allowed. That's simply not acceptable to me. And at that point, my heart just opened up 
and I had to do what I had to do. And now all of Israel is talking about the Temple Mount. And I don't know what you believe, whether you're a Jew or a Christian or an atheist or a Buddhist, but just basic morality, just the inside of the inside. Why can't Jews pray on the Temple Mount? I think it's time for us to stand up for what's right, for what's just, for what's true, and what's good. And please God, the Temple Mount will become a house of prayer for all nations, and not just a house of prayer for one nation, the nation of Islam, but it will be a house of prayer for all people to come and worship together. And so maybe this was my one step my one action, one my one mitzvah, my one maaseh, to bring the redemption a little closer, to bring peace a little bit closer, because we can't live with this injustice forever. Yeah.